Hey, welcome back everybody to part 3 of your C Sharp tutorial series. What in the heck is going on here? Well basically I put down a console over here and then I'm just gonna X out of all this junk up here because we're not gonna need it for right now. So, just bye. You can also click this auto hide which will basically just make it go down here and then you can click it if you need it. If you ever need to get one of those windows back, at least for Mac you go to view, pads, and then you can click any of those. So for example the document outline will come up over here. So, yep, that's that. I'm not gonna need none of that, so I'm just gonna hide it. So now, what we're gonna do is we're going to code up here, and then we're gonna execute our program down here using .NET run. All right, so this is already executing something. I'm gonna stop that, and now we have our setup ready to go. Now before we dive into talking about all of this stuff in here, I wanted to say special thank you to monday.com. Monday.com is generously sponsoring this series, and let me tell you what, Monday.com is the best project management software out there. Different project management systems might have their specialties, and one of the things that I think is Monday's specialty is the intuitive and very beautiful <laughs> user interface. So when you're using Monday.com, it's a very clear picture of what's going on in your project, and it's presented in such a way that you're encouraged to keep track of your work and use the tool to keep track of where your project might be. Definitely incredible tool if you're a visual learner, you can see exactly where your project stands. I'll leave a link in the description, check them out guys, and now let's get back into dissecting all this junk right here. So we're gonna start in the center here and work our way out. So this here is an example of a statement. And another thing you should know, anytime you use two forward slashes, this is known as a comment. Comments are ignored, so I can type anything I want here. So if I wanted to describe this line, I could say a statement. Statements are when we tell the computer what to do. So for example, I can copy this and we can make another statement and change the text there. And now what you need to do in order to run this, you need to save it. I use command S and then go down here and say .NET run. If you don't save it, you're going to get the previous version. So make sure your changes are saved so that when you run .NET run, it gets your newest changes. These statements are inside of these curly braces. Curly braces define a block. So this block of code is tied to this thing right here. So this is an example of a method. A method contains a block of code. Specifically, this method is named main. All of your C-sharp executables are going to need a main method. This is where your program starts. So this is the first statement that's going to get executed. Once again, this is inside another set of curly braces, and this is inside of a class. A class has members, one of which is a method. So you could have multiple methods in here. One might be called main, one might be called something else. <laughs> you can see this nesting system going on. So we have statements inside of methods, inside of classes, and classes are inside of namespaces. So namespaces are an organization structure. Why is this important? Mainly just so you can group your classes. So for example, you might have a different project with classes named the same thing, and it's important that you have different namespaces to distinguish classes from one project and classes from another project. So that's one way it could be structured. You can also have multiple namespaces inside of the same project. Basically, anytime you need to make these logical groupings, you can use namespaces. When people want to use the content inside of your namespace, they can say using and then put your, your namespace name. So for example, system is an example of a namespace. Inside of system, we have all kinds of different classes one of which is this console class. So the full name of console.writeline is actually system.console.writeline. When we put the namespace before it, this is known as a fully qualified name. We can make our lives easier by putting this using system and that just prevents us from having to type out that system dot. There are other namespaces we might wanna use. So for example, if I did something like and you might not know what this means right up front and that's fine. When I do this, you can see again error and it says the type or namespace name list could not be found. And then you can click this little light bulb and say using system.collections.generic. That's going to make this list available to us. So the general structure is that you have a namespace. This contains classes and these contain members. An example of a member is a method and a method contains statements. So that is the entire structure. Trust me, as you go on, this is gonna be a lot more clear. This is all like craziness right now probably, <laughs> but just look at this structure, write it down, and then if you're confused at any point, just look at this and figure out where things fit. This can help us structure our code properly. For example, if you're trying to create a statement, you don't wanna put that in the wrong spot, such as right here. 
if we did a statement right here, it's not gonna work because that's not where it belongs. So to show that, I could go up here and say console.write line, and you can see it's not working. It's just giving me this error. That's because it's not inside the right spot. It needs to go inside of a method. So keep this little diagram close to you, tattoo it on your arm, whatever you need to do. <laughs> this will help you tremendously. That is the basic structure we have right here. In the upcoming videos, we're going to get into some more of the stuff such as the static void and what this string args is, but just giving you a little bit at a time. Let me know if you guys think this content has been helpful. Does this give you a better picture or is this just too much information at once and you'd prefer just to kind of spread it out throughout the series? Leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd also like to know your favorite beverage. <laughs> I don't know why, I just, I, just feel, I just feel like trying some new stuff. So leave a comment. Thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video.